Russia's Su-57, nicknamed Felon by NATO, is Moscow's answer to American air power. It's presented as a fifth-generation marvel, a ghost in the sky ready to challenge the F-22 and F-35. But does the reality match the hype? When you get past the air show theatrics and dig into the engineering, a very different picture starts to emerge. We're about to break down piece by piece why the Su-57, for all its strengths, has a serious stealth problem. This isn't about opinion, it's about the physics of low observable design. In modern air combat, if you can be seen, you can be targeted. So stick around as we deconstruct the hype and reveal the compromises that hold this superfighter back. The story spun by Moscow is one of pure technological triumph. The Sukhoi Su-57 is framed as the peak of Russian aviation, a multi-role fighter that blends stealth, super maneuverability, super cruise, and next-gen avionics into one lethal machine. Official statements describe a jet that can dominate in air-to-air -air dogfights and then slip through enemy lines for ground attack missions, all while staying hidden from radar. They point to its composite materials, special coatings, and internal weapons bays as proof of its stealth credentials. This jet was supposed to be Russia's counter to the American F-22 Raptor and F-35 Lightning II, a symbol of a reborn military-industrial complex. It was designed to replace the legendary MiG-29 and Su-27, securing Russia's skies for a new generation. This marketing has been relentless, aimed at both stirring patriotism at home and attracting foreign buyers. For years, the Su-57 has been the star of Russia's arms catalog, sold as a cheaper alternative to pricey American stealth fighters. The message was simple. Why buy the Western option when you can get something nearly as good for less? Lately, we've heard claims of the Su-57 getting combat experience over Ukraine, launching new long-range missiles, and testing its systems against Western-supplied air defenses. These stories are presented as a real-world validation of the platform. The myth being sold is that of a mature, battle-hardened stealth fighter. It's a powerful story, but like many powerful stories, it starts to fray when you look a little closer. Before we pick apart the Su-57, let's define what stealth actually means for a fifth-generation fighter. The gold standard here is, without a doubt, America's F-22 Raptor and F-35 Lightning II. For these jets, low observability isn't just a feature, it's the core principle of their entire design. It's a philosophy that dictates every angle, every seam, and every material. Stealth isn't about being invisible. It's about radically shrinking the distance at which an enemy can detect and shoot at you. The key metric is the radar cross-section, or RCS, which is basically the size of the aircraft on a radar screen. A big conventional fighter might look like a barn on radar. A true stealth fighter aims for an RCS closer to a steel marble. How is this done? First, the shape. The F-22 and F-35 use planform alignment, where the edges of the wings, tails, and other surfaces are all set at a few specific angles. This scatters radar energy away from the source instead of reflecting it back. It means avoiding right angles and flat vertical surfaces at all costs, as they are perfect radar mirrors. Second, hiding the engines. The fan blades of a jet engine are a huge source of radar reflection. To fix this, American jets use serpentine, or S-ducts, the air intakes curve, so there's no straight line from the outside to the engine face. Radar waves go in, bounce off radar absorbent walls, and fade away. Third, radar absorbent materials, or ARAM. These are special coatings and composites that absorb radar energy and convert it into tiny amounts of heat. The entire skin of an F-22 or F-35 is a complex system of these materials. And finally, everything, weapons, sensors, fuel pods, is carried inside. Anything hanging off the wing creates a massive radar signature, instantly defeating the purpose of a stealthy airframe. The F-22 and F-35 have internal weapons bays that pop open for just a few seconds to fire a missile. This combination of shaping, hidden engines, advanced materials, and internal carriage is what defines a true stealth fighter. It's incredibly difficult and expensive. It's not a feature you can just add on. It has to be the soul of the machine. This is the standard the Su-57 has to meet. When we measure the Su-57 against these principles, the fifth-generation facade starts to crack. The jet isn't a product of a pure stealth philosophy. It's a series of compromises where low observability was often traded for things like speed and raw maneuverability. Let's start with the most obvious problem, the engines. Look at an F-22 or F-35 head-on, and you can't see the engine fans. Now, look at the Su-57. It doesn't have full S-ducts. Instead, it uses partial serpentine ducts and a device called a radar blocker, essentially a grate that sits in front of the engine fans to help mask them. While this is better than leaving them completely exposed, it's a less effective fix than a true S-duct design. 
This compromise means that from the front, the most important angle for an attacking fighter, the Su-57 is inherently more visible. The rear of the aircraft on early models also used conventional engine nozzles from the older AL-41F1 engine, which do little to hide its significant thermal and radar signature. Next, let's look at the airframe. While it does use some stealthy shaping, it's full of trade-offs. The canards, those small forward wings, and the leading edge root extensions give the Su-57 incredible maneuverability, but they also create extra angles and seams that can reflect radar waves. The F-22 and F-35 specifically avoid canards for this exact reason. On top of that, close-up photos of early Su-57s have shown noticeable gaps between panels. In the world of stealth, every millimeter counts. While production quality has likely improved, these fundamental design choices remain. Then you have the sensors. The Su-57 is covered in various bumps and pods for its different sensor and infrared search and track IRST systems. While this gives the pilot great awareness, each of those bumps disrupts the clean, stealthy surfaces of the aircraft. The F-35, in contrast, integrates its 360-degree sensor system directly into the jet's skin, maintaining a low observable profile from all angles. The end result of these compromises is a radar cross-section that is significantly larger than its American rivals. While exact figures are classified, open source estimates generally place the Su-57's frontal RCS somewhere between 0.1 and 1 square meter. Compare that to the F-35, which is estimated to be around 0.0015 to 0.005 square meters. That's a massive difference, and it means the Su-57 can be detected at much greater ranges, giving an F-22 or F-35 pilot plenty of time to find, track, and engage it long before the Su-57 pilot even knows they're in in danger. An aircraft that has its stealth optimized for the front, but less so from other angles, is a 4.5 generation fighter with stealth features, not a true all-aspect stealth fighter. Beyond its design, the Su-57 program has been held back by two huge problems, its engines and its painfully slow production. For most of its life, the Su-57 has flown with an interim engine, the Saturn AL-41F1. This is basically a souped-up version of the engine from the Su-35S, a 4.5-generation fighter. It's a powerful motor, but it was never the final plan. It doesn't enable true supercruise, the ability to fly supersonic without hitting the fuel-guzzling afterburners, a key ability for a fifth-gen jet. The permanent fix was always meant to be the new Isdeli A30 engine, also known as the AL-51F1. This engine promises more thrust, better efficiency, and a new stealthier nozzle design. It's the engine that's supposed to unlock the Su-57's full potential, including effective supercruise. After years of delays, Russia now claims the engine is entering service on the newest Su-57M models. However, many of the jets in the fleet still rely on the older, less stealthy engines. This leads to the second problem. Russia just isn't building many of them. Original plans called for 150 jets by 2020. That didn't happen. While production has been ramping up, by mid-2025, estimates suggest the total number delivered is somewhere between 20 and 30 aircraft. Compare that to the competition. The U.S. has delivered over 1,000 F-35s to its forces and allies worldwide. China is thought to have built over 200 of its J-20 stealth fighters. The Su-57 fleet is a rounding error in comparison. This small number means it can't have a major impact on a large conflict. Its use in Ukraine reflects this. It's often seen launching missiles from the relative safety of Russian airspace. Russia can't afford to risk losing one of its few stealth fighters. Its combat role has often seemed more like a way to test new missiles and market the jet than to prove it can survive deep inside enemy airspace. So, what's the final word on Russia's Su-57? When you strip away the marketing, you're left with a machine that, while impressive in some ways, doesn't quite live up to its fifth-generation stealth claims. It's an aircraft defined by compromise. It has incredible super maneuverability, a high top speed, and long range. But these strengths, which come from a traditional fourth-generation design mindset, were achieved by sacrificing the one thing that defines the fifth generation. All aspect, very low observability. The partially exposed engines, the compromised shaping, the reliance on interim engines for much of its life, and the tiny production numbers all tell a clear story. The Su-57 is not in the same league as the F-22 or F-35. Its radar signature is significantly larger, making it vulnerable to the very jets it was designed to counter. While recent upgrades in the Su-57M, like the new Isdelia 30 engine and AI-assisted avionics, are closing some gaps, the core design philosophy remains. Its cautious use over Ukraine, often as a standoff missile launcher rather than a deep penetration asset, suggests a lack of confidence in its to survive against modern air defenses. 
In the end, the Su-57 is a cautionary tale about how incredibly hard it is to build a true stealth fighter. You can't just add stealth as a feature, it has to be the uncompromising foundation of the design. In the brutal calculus of modern air combat, where being seen means being destroyed, the Su-57 is not the invisible predator it was meant to be. By the metrics that matter, and by its very design, it remains a stealth failure. If you found this deep dive into the tech of modern air combat interesting, make sure to like and subscribe to our channel, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss our next breakdown. What are your thoughts on the Su-57? Leave a comment below.